combined haven't played that many playoff games. Cleveland up by three. The only starter who hasn't scored is LeBron James. He likes to distribute early. He's been amongst the NBA assist leaders in first quarter all season. Williams to Shaq. And shot stolen by Dan. And the Bulls are very good defensive team. Third in the NBA in opponents' field goal percentage this year. As Rose throws it away, then steals it right there. Minor can Rose play catch. Dan. O'Neal Walker back. And Jamison, a very good rebounder, starts it the other way. Parker, that's a three. O'Neal, the offensive rebound, gets it to go. He's on foot. Pretty strong start. Five points early for Shaq. And Vinny Del Negro wants a timeout. As the Cavs are reeled off an 8 0 run. And here's the first of what might be many standing ovations during April, May, and June. The NBA Playoffs on ABC, brought to you by the United States Air Force. Experience more at airforce.com. Sears, life well spent. And Wendy's, you know when it's real. Back in Cleveland for game one. Cavs the early lead on the Bulls. It wasn't an easy end to the regular season for Chicago. They had to fight till the final day to make the playoffs, but also had to deal with a pretty big controversy in Chicago. It was back on March the 30th that Vinny Del Negro and John Paxson, the executive vice president of basketball operations, had a confrontation back in the offices after a game. The dispute was over minutes for Joaquin Noah, who was coming back from plantar fasciitis and missing 18 games. He had a limited amount of minutes. Noah went over. Paxson and Del Negro had a physical altercation after the game, and we asked Del Negro about it yesterday. It's totally, uh, you know, between myself and the front office, and uh, um, it really has gotten blown out uh, of proportion. Um, but that's what happens. Of course, it's disappointing. I mean, um, but, you know, things happen and, you know, you move on. Um, you know, I just, my mindset was is do whatever I can preparation wise to help the team be successful. I give the players tremendous credit just kind of staying in that tunnel vision and just getting the job done. Well, Del Negro said as LeBron James called for an offensive foul that it isn't an issue with the team, but it certainly is. A pretty important thing that happened. Very unusual here. Guys, what are your thoughts, Mark? Well, first of all, I disagree. It hasn't been blown out of proportion. I would argue the case that it hasn't been given as much attention as it should have been given. You're talking about two guys in a position of authority getting into a confrontation. We don't know the, the, the story as far as what actually happened, but we do know something happened that cannot be tolerated, unacceptable, and you shouldn't wait till the end of the season. Something should happen right away as far as... Uh, Settling this and solving exactly what happened. Well, to me, it's a couple things. Garform and the general manager came out with a statement and said they were going to address it at the end of the year. That shouldn't be allowed. It wouldn't be allowed if it was a player going at a coach or a player going at someone in management. I think the NBA needs to step in and get the information right now, right away, as to what exactly happened. And then, secondarily, management, I don't think, is ever in the making a good decision if they come right after a game and try to discuss whatever issues may be bothering them with the coach i never had that happen you always wait for the next day when cooler heads can prevail it just doesn't make sense to come down right after a game certainly never a good thing whether it's general manager and coach whether it's player and coach in many instances and you've got two guys who are contemporaries in paxson and del negro we know both of them, both good guys. And it's such a bad incident to happen. I mean, it has not seemed like it has affected the team. And both the NBA, we talked about Chicago Bulls, will deal with it. James puts it in. Now, foul. Well, didn't like the call. Well, this is his power. Great spin off the contact. Gibson in the restricted area. Good. Drive and finish by James. Mike, I'm going to disagree with you. 
it absolutely has an impact on the team. It detracts from the credibility of a coach whenever it's known that a management is not solidly behind it. And this isn't just this incident. It's when given the opportunity to say, we believe in this guy numerous times. You know, they they were on track to firing him earlier in the year. I just think, I, I never understand why a team doesn't just support and support and support their coach until they decide to make the change. And if you have to, Fire a guy, that's part of the business. Oh, you make a great point. The reason why, you're talking about 12 guys in uniform. They understand when the coach has ultimate authority and when he does not. And when he doesn't have a voice, it has an impact on just how much you listen. That's just the real world. Well, just anyways, even though the players will tell you no, it has no impact, it will start a deterioration in terms of their overall awareness of his credibility in the organization. That type of thing. Well, I, I just think that it does nobody any good. Uh, I don't think it serves management. I don't think it serves coaches or players to show any signs of crack. Uh, a house divided can never stand. It's Taj Gibson's call for push-off. And as you said, even last year in Del Negro's first year, there was talk that uh, he might not be back. Then they had that great series against Boston. Took him to seven games. He was returned. They had the slow start to this year. And the word in December was that they had made the decision that he was going to get fired. They just had to figure out who was going to replace him. Then the Bulls went on another good second-half run, with the exception of that 10-game losing streak. But they've done it two years in a row. Second half run, got him in the playoffs. As Jameson flips it up and in, and here's Del Negro finishing his second season and both in the playoffs. Well, and you look at Chicago. Last year, the reason they made that series such a great series against Boston was because of their perimeter play. Rose, Ben Gordon, and John Salmon. This year, you eliminate two of those guys, and they're still at 500. Why? Because they're a good, very good defensive team. And I'll tell you this. You're never a good defensive team in this league by accident. You're a good defensive team because of coaching and a commitment. I'll tell you what, you're very fortunate that you decided not to talk to your team and allow cool heads to prevail because there were so many nights playing for you. I just wanted you to say something, and I was going to slug you. So many nights. Just one word from you. I was waiting on it. Well, you know what? You know what? I think you would have had to gotten in line to take the first shot. You wouldn't have been the only one. We talk about Chicago's good defense right now having a problem stopping the Cavs like many teams do. It's 24 to 12, and yet another turnover. That is killing Chicago. Seven turnovers here in the first period. Jamison won't go. Mo Williams, the smallest guy on the floor with a rebound. Jamison will try it again. Antoine Jamison, nine points here in the first quarter. He's got a big smile on his face this week. Acquired from Washington. What a difficult year it was with the Wizards. Now he's playing for a championship. Tough shot from Derrick Rose. I love this young man. Poised. He's a, he's a sneaky competitor, gets after it. They need to stop the bleeding. He takes the ball, takes control, and makes a play. So another good first quarter for Cleveland. They lost their last four games of the regular season. with Paul Williams back there. LeBron James sitting out those games to rest up. But they don't seem rusty at all. As Rose misses, Andy Perejao the rebound. Foul by Derrick Rose. LeBron James is the king, but he's got some big time help in this postseason, Mark. Well, we talked about the key. Other guys stepping up and making.